Welcome to Rock the Boat with Richard Hagen, your weekly dose of international boating, super yachting and maritime industry news and opinions. Once again, it's been an extremely busy week on the world's waters, but for a nice change, we start this week's episode with news from my home city of Cape Town, South Africa. According to a recent international report on the future of the global boat building market, Africa is forecast to become the second fastest growing boat building region in the world over the next four years. Cape Town is one of Africa's biggest and most important ocean economy hubs, according to the city of Cape Town. The city's boat building industry has enjoyed consistent growth and in the last seven years has created 12,000 jobs. Its exports have also grown by around 20% every year year over the same period. Cape Town stands out as one of the top catamaran hull producing cities in the world. The city's biggest manufacturer in this category is Robertson and Kane, which is also the third largest catamaran builder in the world and the biggest builder of power catamarans in the world. It plans to build up to 160 catamarans this year, with that number set to grow to 220 in the next two years. The company employs over 1,800 people and with each boat selling for between 7 and 21 million rand, Robertson and Kane is a huge contributor to Cape Town's economy. But they're not the only Cape Town boat builder making waves with their catamaran hulls. Another one is Two Oceans Marine, which manufactures the famous Magnum range of sports fishing power cats. The Magnums are trusted by the local fishing fraternity for their safe and comfortable handling of the extremely tough sea conditions around Cape Town. Then there's also Hammercat, a relative newcomer whose boats have done so well that one model was just this year nominated for an award in the Multi-Hulls magazine Annual Catamaran Awards. There's no doubt that South African companies are true specialists in the design and construction of catamaran hulls. Meanwhile, the city of Cape Town has launched and funded a project called Blue Cape, which aims to support the growth of industries in the so-called ocean economy. These are marine manufacturers, such as boat builders, wetsuit fabricators and surfboard manufacturers, super production and maintenance, and ocean sports, including recreation, events, and adventure tourism. The city says that there is significant potential for development in these industries and it wants to work together with the stakeholders in it to help it grow. Robertson & Kane is a household name in the South African boating industry. It is 28 years old now and manufactures the world famous Leopard sailing and power catamarans ranging from the Leopard 42 sailing yacht to the Leopard 53 power cat. Its yachts have a reputation for sea keeping, great build quality and comfort. Most of its boats are delivered to clients in Europe and the US both for private and charter use. If you'd like to learn more about the Leopard range of yachts, visit leopardcatamarans.com. Swedish sailing yacht builder Halberg Rassi has introduced a new model, the Halberg Rassi 400. The 400 offers an aft cockpit layout featuring twin helm stations and twin rudders on top of a quote, modern and efficient hull shape, unquote. It's an evolution of another 40 foot model that the company recently launched, the 40C. That model features a center cockpit with a single central helm station. Forward of the helm stations on the 400 is the main seating area consisting of two benches with additional seating around the hatch. A fixed high gloss varnish teak table is available for optional fitment into the sockets between the benches. Behind the helms is a fold down swim platform for easy access to and from the water. In terms of accommodation, buyers have a choice of either one or two heads compartments and two or three cabins. The company says that for the first time on one of their yachts, the owner's cabin is located in the bow and features an ensuite toilet and separate shower. Elsewhere in the interior, you can specify options including a washing machine, a dishwasher and an additional fridge and freezer. You can even have air conditioning and a water maker. The Holberg Rassi 400 will be officially launched at Scandinavia's biggest sailboat show called Open Yard, which will be hosted in Sweden at Holberg Rassi's facility next month from the 27th to the 30th of August. For more information about the boat, visit holberg-rassi.com. From one new sailing yacht to another, 
British manufacturer Oyster Yachts has teased its latest model, the Oyster 495. Oyster Yachts has been through a rocky journey over the past few years, but they've successfully turned their fortunes around, and now they're working on a number of exciting new yachts. The 495 is the latest one to be revealed, and in my opinion, it's really quite beautiful. The company says that the 495 is a new breed of 50-foot blue water sailing yacht. It's designed, they say, to offer a stunning combination of performance, comfort and style by combining modern styling, creative detailing and practical seagoing features not normally found in a yacht of this size. They want buyers to be equally confident exploring coastal water, crossing oceans or even circling the world. The new yacht is highly customizable but there are a number of standard features. At the stern, there's a fold down swim platform to allow for easy access to the water. Ahead of that, there are two helm stations. The the cockpit features bench seating on either side of a table with fold out sections that can accommodate up to 8 people for dining. Under the table there's room for a drinks caddy or a wine locker. Under the deck there's a full galley, plenty of seating and two cabins each with double beds and their own ensuite heads compartment. Under the water there's a single Yanmar engine fed by an 800 litre fuel tank and your choice of a standard kill or a shorter shoal kill. There are loads of exciting things happening at Oyster including several upcoming new releases so you can be sure that I'll be featuring this company again soon. In the meantime though visit oysteryachts.com to check out their range. Last week, SpaceX surprised us with drone footage of its new autonomous drone ship on sea trials. The ship's whimsical name is a shortfall of Gravitas, in honor of the science fiction novels written by the late Ian M. Banks which include a spaceship named Experiencing a Significant Gravitas Shortfall. As it happens, SpaceX owns two other autonomous drone ships which are also named for vessels in novels from the same author. One is named Just Read the Instructions and the other is Of Course I Still Love You. Ah, cute. The new ship's role is to act as a landing pad to collect SpaceX rockets returning to Earth. It's fully automated and self-powered. That means that it doesn't require a tugboat to take it out into the Atlantic Ocean where it will be based, near SpaceX's Florida launch site at the Kennedy Space Center. The drone ships are equipped with four diesel-powered azimuth thrusters that make them capable of precision positioning. An azimuth thruster is basically just a propeller mounted underneath the hull that's capable of swiveling 360 degrees, making a rudder unnecessary. This kind of engine gives ships much better maneuverability than the typical fixed propeller and rudder system that you find on most ships and yachts. According to Space.com, Of Course I Still Love You was switched to the Pacific Coast last month. They say that this is in response to SpaceX ramping up launches of its Starlink satellites from California, requiring more drone ships to catch the reusable parts of the rocket. Starlink, if you didn't know, is a new system that aims to provide high-speed internet access to the whole world via thousands of small mass-produced satellites in constant low Earth orbit. It's an ambitious plan that requires loads of rocket launches and, of course, loads of recoveries in order to keep costs down. That's where the drone ships come in. According to Wikipedia, in 2016 about half of all SpaceX missions required landing at sea and that number is only going to increase with Starlink. And I thought this part was quite interesting. SpaceX's drone ship recovery operations enjoy temporary protection from other vessels and aircraft thanks to the use of something called a dynamic restricted area. SpaceX represents the first such use of a dynamic restricted area ever approved by the US Coast Guard. For more information about SpaceX, visit SpaceX.com. This is the Golden Horizon and it is the world's largest square rigged sailing vessel. The ship is a very close replica of a vessel called France 2 from 1913 and it seeks to attract quote like-minded adventure seekers for a sailing experience that allows guests to connect with the elements of the natural world unquote. Setting the marketing mumbo jumbo aside for a moment I'm sure we can all agree that Golden Horizon is uniquely beautiful. There's just something so romantic about a big sailing ship. I can't help but think about all the places we could go to and the things we could see. 
But anyway, enough dreaming. Golden Horizon was designed by Polish naval architect Zygmunt Chorin for a company called Star Clippers in Sweden. It was then built by the Brodersplit shipyard in Split in Croatia. Her original name was meant to be Flying Clipper, but then disaster struck in the form of a vastly complicated legal dispute. I read up on some of the basics of the whole argument so that I could at least talk about it here, but honestly, it's way above my pay grade and I don't understand any of it. The best I can do is to repeat what one article stated, calling it a custody battle based on allegations of violations of the build contract for the ship. The facts that we need to know are that the ship was launched in 2017 already as Flying Clipper and was meant to undertake its first passenger voyage the following year, but thanks to this legal process it was delayed for several years until now. Fortunately, that's all changed and the ship's on its way. It's now been chartered by a company called Tradewind Voyages who renamed her Golden Horizon and put her to work. Her first destination is the UK where she arrived in Falmouth about a week ago to collect her first load of guests. She's now going to be following a fairly traditional itinerary of sailing trips along the UK south coast until later this year when she's due to set sail across the world to Australia. There she'll follow a similar routine of trips along the Australian coast. Eventually, however, once COVID travel and cruising restrictions have been lifted, the company says that it plans to offer a more varied and exotic travel itinerary for the ship. The Golden Horizon is 8,770 tons and is able to carry 272 passengers spread across 140 sea-facing cabins. She has a crew of 159 looking after her and her guests. Passengers can make use of various bars, a restaurant, pools, gyms and a spa. Her hull is ice strengthened so she's able to offer voyages to the Arctic and down to Antarctica. Golden Horizon's rigging however is the real star of the show with its impressively tall masts. On a technical level, her sailing setup is quite amazing. She has over 6,000 square meters of sail area. That's apparently more than double the sail area of the famous clipper Cutty Sark from the Golden Age of Sail. At the time of writing this video, reservations were still available for the UK and later European cruisers, ranging in price from about £1,400 to about £2,800. Visit TradeWindVoyages.com to reserve your cabin. Well that's it for this week's news, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, it really helps us out. And when I'm not making these videos, I'm a marketing copywriter specializing in working with the boating and marine industry. I craft professional blogs, email marketing, product descriptions, website content, video scripts and anything else you need to be written up. Contact me on my website at richardhagen.com or via LinkedIn to set up a quick call. I'd love to hear from you. All of my details are in the description. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next week.